let me know when you're ready. Thanks, Daddy. All right, I, I have your blessing. If making it easy to be an illegal alien isn't enough, government is another way to say better than you. In fact, you know how fast a five cent hooker goes down. No sane country would do that. Cruz and Cassick are in it for a participation trophy. Oh, what you represent to them is freedom. Hosted by the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash. Just remember, all hate mail comes to me. The Southside Mutt Show. Cheerleader. I don't have the boots for it. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome to the Southside Much Show with your host, or hosted by, I should say, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash. And we are digging up the dirt on news. Of course, Crash, as usual, is running behind. But that's also happens when you throw together a special like this. And for those that don't know, we are throwing this special together for the news that broke today from Jane, director of FBI, James Comey, who announced he is not recommending any uh, indictment of Hillary Clinton. And we'll get into more information as it goes, but it was pointed out that she did break the law. She broke the law, but they're not going to indict her. They're not trying, going to try to convict. For whatever reason or another, they have decided not to convict or indict. This shows the that there's two levels of government and law. Excuse me, two levels of law. There's one for these elite politicians such as the Clintons. And there is another that us peon peasants must follow. We are held to the letter of the law where, as it was said, since they don't think she had an intent to break the law, that's one of the reasons they weren't going to indict her or recommend indicting her. Intent. If I go out and get drunk, and I got told you can't make this, it's not the same thing, if I go out and get drunk unintentionally, and I int- unintentionally kill some people while I'm driving drunk, I should not be convicted because, or even indicted because, it was not intentional. If I go out and um, take money from a bank, but I didn't intend to go out and take money from a bank, I should not be indicted on a crime because my intentions weren't there. We don't indict on intentions. There's been plenty of people that went to jail. Because they didn't intend to do anything, but they ended up breaking the law. And as the old saying goes, um, ignorance is no excuse. It is disheartening, sickening, saddening, and repulsive that these people feel that they are above the law. All right, I'm going to whoop Crash's ass. He's running behind so bad. But um, at 8.30, we're going to have uh, Ken the Conservative joining us for about 10 minutes. And at about 8.45, we will have a special uh, guest, a good friend of mine, Russell. He'll be calling in to discuss what's going on. Uh, he actually didn't know until tonight. He was busy uh, doing some stuff in his house and hadn't been around the TV all day. And I can understand that. And like he said, he he's kind of to the point of it, it's getting disheartening. You got to step away from the damn TV anymore. 
And I can understand that if it wasn't for me doing what I do now, I I I I wouldn't be able to sit here all day and put up with this BS. It, it, it's sickening. Uh, it, it's. The FBI even admitted that, let's see, where did he, uh, I got the whole statement that he made today, and where the heck did all my notes go? There's, there's some of them. Although we did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton and her colleagues intended to violate the law governing the handling of classified information, there is evidence that they were extremely careless in the handling of very sensitive and highly classified information. Petraeus got hit for even less than this, and he got two years federal probation, uh, fines out the wazoo. I believe he lost his pension, his ranking, all that, but yet Hillary Clinton walks without even a trial. And if anything, this is going to hurt Hillary in the race this year. And you think, how is it? It's proven that she was, and no, it doesn't prove anything. They came out and said that she was, she broke the law, but they're basically giving her a free pass. Uh... That is is ammunition for Trump and the Republicans if they would get off their ass and actually have a backbone instead of acting like goddamn liberals. How you doing, Crash? What's up? My blood pressure. What? My blood pressure is up. Mm. Well, I would apologize by, for being late, but since I was ignorant of the time of the show, it's not it wasn't intentional. You weren't intentional. It was not intentional. Absolutely not. That man had to eat. <laughs> hey, you can't get in the way of a fat man eating. Oh, hell no. My gravy levels were dropping dangerously low. Hold on one second. Oh. But I, I was saying why he's fiddling around. Um, this actually helps Donald Trump. Because if all right, I'm back. All right, I was explaining how this actually helps Donald Trump. Amazingly, this does help Donald with the presidential run. Because it'll help the Don. Yeah, but if it went to a trial and she was vindicated and found not guilty, that would be a big plus in her column. I mean, right now you got Democrats out there. Oh, this vindicates her and shows she's innocent. No, it doesn't. No, 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 no. Them choosing to not press charges is not to be confused with innocence. Right. And that's two completely different freaking things. You can have a mistrial in a court of law. It does not mean that you are innocent of the freaking charges. Yep. Okay. And and that's that's exactly what it is. Um, Let me look at something real quick. (laughs) Just hold on. I'm trying to find something. All right, so um, sorry for a little uh, silence there, just uh, trying to find some information. Um, the one thing I want to read is, yes, I actually have the U.S. 18 U.S. Code 793, Gathering, Transmitting, and Losing Defense Information. Because everybody keeps going with, well, she didn't intend to do it, and there's, they have to show intent that she meant to do it. No, they don't. No, no, there's a difference. Okay. No, if we. I, I already had this with a lawyer. She's. Well, I'm a I lawyer. I, I turn well, around. Yeah, okay. You know, I'm going to make this really simple to everybody because everybody wants to jump on the freaking terminology. Here's two terms that everybody hears in the freaking news: manslaughter, murder. One. You want to. You want to know what the goddamn difference is? It's not whether or not the person died. It's whether or not I intended to kill them. Manslaughter. Good point. I unintentionally killed them, but they still died. I'm still in trouble. I still go to jail. Murder, I intended to kill them. They still died. I still get in trouble. I still go to jail. 
Do you notice the common theme here? You yep. fucked up. You go to jail. Ignorance of the law is not a defense. Well, let me go. And th- that has been stated in the courts. All right. Let me let me go through so we can. Sorry. No, 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 no. Don't be. Uh, so it is um, 18 U.S. Code 793 subsection F. Whoever being entrusted with or having lawful possession or control of any documents, writing, code books, single books, sketch, photograph, photographic negative, blueprint, plan, model, map, instrument, appliance, note, or information relating to national fence, one, through gross negligence, permits the same to be removed from its proper place of... custody or delivered to anyone in violation of his trust or to be lost stolen abstracted or destroyed or two having knowledge that the same has been illegally removed from its proper place of custody or delivered to anyone in violation of its trust or lost or stolen abstracted destroyed and fails to make prompt report of such loss theft, abstract, or destruction to a superior officer shall be fined under this title or imposed or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. Nothing in there says you have to be have intent. Nope. Let's and, see. Uh, Paratus, um, I'm sorry, I always screw up the guy's name. Uh, the general. Oh, uh, General Petraeus. Petraeus, thank you. Um, it was so. Sub- he may have leaked something. He might have. They never had any proof. It was speculatory. He lost his freaking pension. He lost his job. He lost his security clearance. His complete reputation was destroyed due yep. to the possibility of classified information being mishandled. The possibility. That's all it was. A possibility. Now, it's already been confirmed that she did, she did mishandle classified information. Now, I don't care if there was 30,000 emails and they can only say that 118 of them were classified. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter if it's one or if it's a million. It's still, you mishandled the classified information. It was a job you were entrusted with. You fucked up because you think that you're better than freaking everybody else. You know what? Pay the goddamn piper. This double standard bullshit is it's freaking it's insane. It is absolutely goddamn ridiculous. I can't claim ignorance of the law. No. Just so because I, I you, you know I like I like putting all the information out there. Gross negligent is a legally culpable carelessness Showing a conscious or voluntary disregard of the need to use reasonable care. That is the legal definition of gross negligence. And likely to cause foreseeable grave injury or harm. The difference between negligence and gross negligence may be somewhat subjective. You got a birdie floating around your head? You got a what? A birdie. A birdie? Yeah, I hear this little tweeting going on. Maybe I have the bird floating yeah. around my head. Dude, I live in the middle of the woods. <laughs> yeah, there's birds out all over the place right now. It sounds like you have a bird right there, or like you got a parrot on your shoulder that's tweet, tweet, tweeting. <laughs> now, I think I've got a nest up in the uh, magnolia tree. Now, what what surprises me is there's actually a lot of Democrats that are up in arms. Also, they they are they are disgusted with what they see with this, and they can actually see that there is seems to be a law for the Clintons and these uh, political elites, and then a law for the common man. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look at it. I, you know what? I mean, in all honesty. Hey, Crash, uh, I'm going to take a two-minute break real quick. All right? You keep talking. Okay? Okay. The Clintons, they set a precedent. Bill set a precedent. He turned around during his presidency. He had an affair. He made statement after statement after statement, swearing and testifying to the fact that I did not have sexual relations with that woman. He swore to it. And the more time that went on, the more evidence that came out, in the end, he had to actually come clean with it. 
And then he says, oh, well, it was it was just this. that This was all we did. That doesn't actually count. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll tell you what. All you guys out there, go ask your wives, your girlfriends, your significant others if – a blowjob does not count as sexual relations. I can guarantee you right now. Hey, 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 hey. don't be giving it, it out secrets. <laughs> oh, I might be mishandling classified material. Yes. Uh, yeah, the thing is, but he got away with it. That guy got away with it. So what's she doing? She's doing the exact same goddamn maneuver. She swears I, there was no top secret information. There was no classified information. Oh, it's a oh, Republican oh, yeah, conspiracy yeah, against you us. You, you caught me. There was classified information. Oh, well, but since I didn't actually know about it, that means, therefore, I, what the fuck? When the hell did the Clintons become royalty that are untouchable? I, this is complete fucking bullshit. This is the second time that this family, in the public light, has pulled this type of crap. And that's not even to mention the other scandals they've been involved with. And it's not that I'm trying to pick on the Clintons specifically. Well, I guess, yeah. Well, if right they didn't now, give us the material to pick on them with, uh, we wouldn't be picking on them. They didn't make it so damn easy. The fact of the matter is, they think they're above the law. Anybody that thinks they're above the law, I'm going to freaking I'm gonna go after them. Because if I'm going to be held to the letter of the law, then you know what? You sure as hell better be too. Especially if you're in a position where uh, you're going to be elected by the population – to enforce the laws, you sure as hell had better be accountable to them. I, it, this is complete freaking bullshit. Yep. I'm, I'm just, I'm so freaking tired of it. You know, I mean, they turn around and they say, oh, you know, uh, uh, what, what is it? you know, the Godfather. Oh, you know, they thought, you know, these monsters, they think they're above the law, but they're not. We'll get them. You know, we got them with tax evasion. See, that's the power of the law. Then where the fuck can't we get these people? How the hell can she keep snubbing her freaking snotty, ugly ass witch bitch nose at us? Because who? Hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Who appointed um, Loretta Lynch to one of her first positions as a judge? Yeah. Bill Clinton. And if you tell me that this weekend, you know, Bill Clinton meets up with her in private, and now all of a sudden. Now, all of a sudden, oh, my God, things change, and, um, yeah, Yeah, we can't convict. The only thing I want to know about that private meeting out on the tarmac was, is there a new flavor of cigar that I need to be aware of? Because I want to stay fucking far away from it. I mean, especially if you're going into a plane, and you're going to be in that plane by yourself with Bill Clinton, yeah, I think there was talks of grandkids, but this is, I'm going to make some new grandkids. I know people are going to be like, that's not how it works. Yeah, that's how it actually works. You have to do that to get the kids and to get the grandkids. Oh, the best of men, my soul. Um, so how are the grandkids? Oh, the grandkids aren't doing that great. Their grandmother's being uh, charged with a crime. Anything you could do about that? It, 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 it's so sad. It, it, abs- it absolutely flabbergasted me. The I, I, and again, it just goes back to the arrogance of all of this. I mean, they literally are just continually thumbing their nose. I mean, shoot, let's just look at the imp- just the, the the appearance of impropriety. I mean, just the fact that Loretta Lynch let herself be put in that situation, she completely lost what ever might have been left of her credibility. She's the freaking attorney general. Yeah. She's the one. The FBI, the Ivory King said, well, the FBI is not pressing charges. Hey, guess what, dickshit? The FBI does not press charges. No, they, they, are, they are making okay. a They make the case. Making a recommendation that no charges. Yeah. Okay. That's the recommendation. That doesn't mean that's not, that doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. Now, yes, 99% of the time, is the Department of Justice going to go with what the FBI says? Yes, because if the evidence is okay. there, they're not going to go ahead with it. Fine. Okay, I get that. But the fact of the matter is the Department of Justice, which Loretta Lynch runs, is investigating 
this woman, for, I mean, damn near what could be considered treasonous, and she's going, she's meeting out on a tarmac on the other side of the country, out of the blue, with the husband of the guy that her department is investigating. Yep. Hey, okay, well, yeah, that doesn't look fishy at all. Oh, and then all of a sudden, oh, no, there's no uh, – yes, she did something wrong, but it's not worth prosecuting? Uh, well, this I'm is the sorry, exact quote. What? This is the exact quote. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, evidence of potential violation right there said she broke the law. Our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Prosecutor, prosecutors necess, necessarily weigh a number of factors before bringing a case. There are obvious considerations like the strength of the evidence, especially regarding intent. Responsibility decisions also consider the context of the person's actions and how similar situations have been handled in the past. Well, gee, let's see. How have similar instances been handled in the past? General freaking lost his goddamn career. Uh, Al Snowden. Snowden. Not, yeah, he came. Snowden come on. is a fugitive. He is a freaking fugitive. They are charging him with treason. And all he basically did was whistleblower. Yeah. And now, not I mean, not to jump on his bandwagon. Do I agree with how he went about it and what he did? You know, not entirely, because I think he could have put a lot of American lives in danger. <laughs> Do I agree with the sentiment that he turned around and blew the lid off of the fact that our that the U.S. government has been secretly spying on us for over a decade? Yeah, I'm proud that he did that. Well, so supposedly he to, tried to go the proper route. He was trying to go the proper route to do a whistleblower, and hey, nobody would listen. Well, they told him to shut up. and Obviously, there's no proper route. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty freaking obvious. I mean, what, what, earlier today, weren't we talking about somebody from the U.N. all of a sudden can't lift weights? Oh, yeah. He's dropping weights on the back of his neck. Yeah, and he's supposed to be, he was supposed to be one of the people testifying in this shit with Clinton? Well, I don't know if it was this. He was supposed to testify against Hillary Clinton. And I, I don't know which matter because there's still the investigation into the Clinton Foundation by the FBI. But it's showing that they ain't going to do shit to anybody. And if they do, they'll find some pissant to go after. To take the fall. And this is the one that still has me has me really questioning the whole integrity. They'll find the fall guy for it. But hang on. They gave prosecution immunity to uh, the guy that did the servers. They don't give that out unless they have evidence and plan on doing a conviction. To just hand out immunity to anybody and everybody unless they plan on getting a conviction. So along the lines, they had somebody to convict. And the big fish would have been Hillary. And he's the one that would have had the information on it. And then all of a sudden, poof. Yeah, well, let's think about it. There might have been other possible possible candidates a short while ago to carry on the Obama-Clinton mantle. Now there's not. Trump was looked at as nothing more than a big joke by everybody, the Republicans and the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he's actually a force to be reckoned with. And honestly, the one thing that we have seen from the Republicans, you know, the rank and file, is even if we had won the office with one of the rank and files, would we actually have won anything? I mean, the ones that are still there are showing a lot of their true colors. We're going to force Trump to sign this agreement, oh, but we're not going to hold ourselves to that same agreement. Oh, yeah. No. Well, you oh, got we Paul Ryan. Stand by this. We, we stand by this. Oh, wait, you threw a temper tantrum? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I guess we can have a con- – oh, you don't want to have a conversation. You want to dictate to us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here, let me bend over for you. Come on. Yeah, I'm waiting for the knock on the door or the door to come bashing in after the tweet I sent out and Facebooked. I sent out that said James Comey and the FBI bent over for Hillary Clinton like they're the prison bitch now. 
And that's what they did is they bent right over for Hillary and she rammed it right. In, well, actually, it was America that she screwed right in the ass. And, and it, no, honestly, it, it, sorry honestly, for putting it that way, way folks. But, right now, the federal department. Hold on a second. Well, as he's doing handling that real quick. One of the another ones is, um, oh, shit, Martha Stewart. Now, I don't like the woman. But Martha Stewart, I mean, I, she gave she had information about some stocks, and she lied insider about it, trading. and she did some insider trading, and she went to prison for it. Hillary yep. Clinton, she basically made the there were seven of them, I think it was seven highly classified, the top classification there is emails, and she gets. To run for president. Yeah, she's not even getting a slap on the wrist. I mean, the only thing that was hinted at was, well, there are other avenues. Uh, you know, her security clearance could be revoked. I'm sorry, how can you run the country without a security clearance? Yep. And, uh. <laughs> I mean, you've already proven that you're that untrustworthy. You're that untrustworthy. So what, now, now all of a sudden there's going to be a new line item for 25 new servers so that she can cycle them at a whim to lose information that she doesn't want anybody to have? Uh, and, and it's being found out she was deleting um, her information of her schedule while at the State Department, which, I mean, she's deleting government uh, information, which is highly illegal also, and she's getting away with that. She's getting away with murder. Well, she did. She murdered fucking four people in Benghazi. <sighs> well, yeah, but now, now you've also got, um, what is it? Uh, was it Chris Stevens' wife that came out and publicly said, I don't blame Clinton? No, I haven't did seen see that? that. No. There was something. It was, there was a spouse, and I, for some reason I want to say it was Stevens' spouse, made a public statement that she does not blame Clinton for the death. Okay, fine. But good for you. That's your personal opinion. I I differ. I may not have been married to Chris Stevens, but I, you know what? I'm an American citizen. And what happened? That's deplorable. And the way she handled it, not only during it, but even after it. I mean, the arrogance, the freaking arrogance. At this point, what difference does it make? Oh, gee, let's see. Setting policy? Ensuring it doesn't happen again? How about that difference? How about that? Yeah. You know, I... Oh. Yeah, it, it's very disheartening. <laughs> oh, I, oh. A hell of a lot more than that. Well, I, just I mean, to give you a heads up what's honestly, going on with the show, I want to give you a quick heads up. Um... We do have two guests that are going to be joining us. I'm going to have to call one of them, Ken the Conservative, in about a minute, 30 seconds. We're going to call him at the bottom of that half hour. Um, And then at quarter to... Oh, great, what? I don't like that guy. (laughs) What? You don't like that guy? I'm just claiming ignorance, so I can claim ignorance and say whatever the fuck does I want, right? And then at a quarter till, we will have a good friend of ours, Russell. Uh, he'll call in. So, um, uh, it, it's yeah, I, I, this, this whole thing. Honestly, the, the thing that actually I think bothers me the most, and I, up until today, I, I've been. I, I, I definitely have been a proponent of the federal government overreaching. You know, uh, you know what? They're overreaching their bounds. They're pushing too far into the states. They're getting too involved. In what goes on at my freaking house? But I've been a little bit more step back on that because I still believe in our federal government. I still believe that in the end they would do what's right. Well, guess what? <laughs> the FBI, the director of the FBI, just bent over and took one. The Department of Justice is continually bending over and taking it. And I'm sorry, internally, inside the United States, that, that's, I mean, that's supposed to be who's protecting us? And I'm supposed to have faith in that system? Are you serious? I agree. 
right. Well, and, let me and, interrupt because we're going to give Ken a call and oh. try to get him on the line. I know, I know. <laughs> it's it's. Well, I need to. It's all right. I got to go get some Vaseline. My foot's chapped. <laughs> all right. Let's see if Ken's ready to get on. Um. I've never actually. You lost your damn Bill mind. Clinton would love me. All right, let's see if he's going to pick up. You still there, Dick? Dean? Good day, Kit McClendon. How you doing, Ken? It's uh, Jersey Joe. Hey, Jersey Joe. What's up, man? What's up? Let me see. I'm trying to see what happened to Crash. I did have him on the line. <laughs> I might have hung up on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, poor Crash. <laughs> so how are you doing today? I'm doing great today. Bye. Nothing like juicy meat like this that gets the week done. Oh. <laughs> It's got the blood flowing really good as the blood pressure shoots up through the roof. <laughs> I heard some dead prosecutor rose from the grave today. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it was funny on Twitter. I had someone telling me because they are a lawyer and there's uh, they they needed to show intent and uh, that's the letter of the law. And I'm, I was just like, you need to go back to get a refund for your law degree. <laughs> Any law school that didn't accept Obama or uh, Hillary, you can go there. You get a degree. <laughs> uh, either that, or they just got went to the store, got a Cracker Jack box, and uh, hey, here we go. Let me see. I'm still trying to see where Crash went. That's weird. Huh. That, like I've never had to do this before. Ooh, there's Dean. All right, how to merged calls? There we go. You there, Dean? Uh, yeah. I didn't think I put you on hold, and I couldn't figure out how to get you back on. Can the conservatives on? We got Crash. Uh, so what is your take on this, Ken? I think it's one of the great miscarriages of justice since uh, OJ was defended by an attorney that said, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, my God, when you listen to Jim Comey, and I had utter respect uh, for the man uh, and the position that he held in office uh, based on what others were saying about him on both sides of the aisle, that he was a very trustworthy and very truthful and honest man. And it appears that he laid out one of the best cases against Hillary uh, that any jurists would have preferred uh, trying. Uh, and at the very end of the speech, he says, oh, but we're not going to do it. <laughs> I was sitting there listening to it. I had it live just as I got on air today, so I patched it in, and I'm hearing him talking. I'm thinking, shit, they're going to go after her. They're going through all this information. She sent the... What do you mean you're not going to... What? <laughs> Did I just have a stroke? I've it before. Did anybody else look at their calendars to check to see if it was April Fool's Day? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, Ken, the, or, uh, Zach had Sean said it best, though. The way he was blinking, I, I, we need people to, like, go back and watch it and, you know, start looking for the Morris code he was sending. I, I'm being held against my will, and I'm being forced to say all this. If it not, reminds, I'll have a gym it accident. It reminds me of the football game in which... Uh, the players, the California, uh, the University of California, was tossing the ball back and forth uh, and scored in the end zone when the band came on the field. The band was already on the field. We were all celebrating. Dude, you have laid out the perfect case for gross negligence. Man, this is over. I, you have put Obama on the spot. You put Hillary on the spot. You have put Loretta Lynch on the spot. There is no gosh darn way we're not moving forward with this. And at the very end, he's like, eh. Hey. It's never been done before. This is the kind of person that John Kennedy didn't hire after delivering the speech about going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Reminds me of a couple like uh, teenage girlfriends that I have. You know, it gets all hot and heavy, and at the last minute, they're like, "Nah, never mind." <laughs> now we know why everyone calls you at school first base. <laughs> <laughs> MSNBC, uh, CNN, and all the other liberal stations are kowtowing. This is the worst of the worst. He actually laid out a case, which if you just take pieces of what he said and play it for the next three months, lays out the fact that Hillary Clinton is probably one of the most incompetent politicians ever elected to office. Uh, And that would go for all the people that ever voted for her. She's completely incompetent. If you do not know that you're on a server that watch, that's being watched by Russia, North Korea, China, uh, the ISIS, if you don't know this is happening and you're Secretary of State, you are either the most ignorant person on the face of the earth or the most incompetent person on the face of the earth or the most guilty person on the face of the earth. And I would go for the latter – yeah, we'll have to Well, one of the things it does is, um, if anything, silver lining, so to speak, is this helps Trump tremendously because he gets to play that tape over and over again of, you know, all the incriminating information that Comey said. He gets to play that over and over again. And you actually, I was shocked to see how many liberals and Democrats that were actually pissed off about this announcement today because they even saw that, hey, guess what? There is a law for the Clintons, and then there's a law that all the rest of us have to file. And I was actually shocked to see liberals. Well, you know, I was I was surprised uh, that liberals were, were shocked. That, that, I mean, the, yeah. the most perfect Teflon Don ever was Bill Clinton. Uh, and now it appears that his wife has uh, raised the stakes even higher. She's got more street cred than Bill right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know who wore the pants in that relationship, though. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, that goes to um, back when I was doing EMS. Uh, Crash was one of my partners. In fact, one of the main partners I had. And I don't know if it was with him. We had a guy that had, like, a head injury, and we have to ask certain questions. One of the questions back then was um, – you know, who's the president? And the guy looks up at us and goes, Hillary Clinton. We deemed him competent. I, 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 <laughs> Suit him up. Put him back in the game. He's okay. <laughs> it, it, it's I, the, the woman has balls. I'll give her that. She has gigantic balls for what she's pulled. Well, well, she wants to ever worry about being compared to Al Capone because she'll never get syphilis. She has Huma Abedin. Uh, but... <laughs> Oh. Uh, <laughs> but but I am sincerely uh, as much as as much as there's been Teflon poured out for all three of them Hillary Obama and Bill I don't think the actual medal was paid uh, planed out uh, or meted out as greatly as it was done today um, and I, I just want to say that. I wish I had gotten the briefcase that Loretta Lynch got uh, oh. on the tarmac. <laughs> well, I think there was more than a briefcase passed during that brief visit. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't, as a female, be in a plane by yourself with Bill Clinton. There was something else passed between those two. No, not unless you're trying to market a new flavor of cigar. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but it appears Bill's attracted to cankles because she's got cankles too. <laughs> Oh, God, Simpson episode. Look at that cankle on her. Uh, I love Mr. Brown Cankle. <laughs> the Bofa and the Fupa to go along with it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. I, listen, I, I, I love what y'all are doing. And I love your show, Jersey Joe. Um, and for those who are listening, I'll be on at uh, 9.05 p.m. Uh, on SHR Media. And High Plains Funded, and we'll be talking about this with Kathy Barnett, uh, who was on Fox News earlier today, uh, and she's got a lot to say. The uh, former uh, Navy veteran uh, will be on the air with us tonight, and so uh, it, it, there is a great deal of animosity, anger, and hatred, uh, visceral hatred, 
Uh, I'm surprised we haven't gotten pitchforks together and started moving down towards the White House. I just. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I think you, we're literally. You don't have yours yet? I, I stopped at the hardware store. I got extra stock. You want one? <laughs> Well, certainly we'll take one. Uh, we're almost to that point, I think, of uh, in, enforcing that part of the declaration. I, we're so close, I think. But, yeah, I know you got a show to do tonight. and um, Yeah, we're not even close anymore, man. They moved the bar so close to the 50-yard line that you could just kick it off, man. Yeah. It's a touchdown. Here's <laughs> a joke with there's a joke of whip it out and it cross over that line. Oh. <laughs> and that's saying a lot for Jersey Joe. <laughs> well, Ken, I want to thank you. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate your time, man. Remember, everybody, coming up right after we uh, the Southside Munch show, we, you will have uh, Ken the Conservative live. Uh, he is a great commentator, and uh, he's been a great friend of mine. And has taught me a lot about doing these shows. Uh, we have one more guest coming up in about five minutes. Um, we're actually we're going to take like a two, three minute break just so we can get something to drink and all that. And um, we'll be on the right back real soon. Uh, you're listening to Southside Mutts right here on uh, SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio. Uh, and also, we are now on iTunes. We'll be right back. Now, Brownells, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. My name is Chris Peranto, call sign Tonto. I was with the Global Response Staff. We were the security element for the Central Intelligence Agency in Benghazi, Libya on 9-11-2012. Uh, myself and my team responded to an attack that killed Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, and two of my teammates, Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty. Radical Islam is basically terrorism in a nutshell. It, uh, it wants to not only put down Western values, it wants to kill anybody that supports those Western values which is freedom, which is Christianity, and which is also anything that looks poorly on Sharia law. Um, we've allowed it again to grow into something that it shouldn't be. And it's becoming stronger and stronger every day that we don't lead from the front. Obama and, and Hillary, by avoiding the phrase radical Islam, they're, they're being politically correct. They don't see it for what it is. And that's straight up destroying the Western world. Radical Islam, doesn't have a fear. They will give up their lives. They will detonate themselves. They will do anything they can to fulfill Sharia law and kill the infidels. If we're not able to even say radical Islam, the word radical Islam, there's no way we can fight it. There's no way we can defeat it. The United States of America doesn't lead from behind. We're always setting the example. If not, we're going to see terrorism get bigger and bigger, and eventually it's just going to be continual lone wolf attacks in the United States. And I don't want that to happen to my kids. I don't want to see my family go through that. Please join me in waking up Washington in this fight on radical Islam, seeing the threat that it really is. Sign up at leadingfromthefront.org. And welcome back to the Southside Mutts. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I am proud to have Crash in today. Maybe we'll get him in tomorrow night, too, for the actual show. This is a special talking about uh, the announcement wait, 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 wait. of the FBI. Wait. What? Huh? The actual show? Yeah, today's only Tuesday, ding dong. Well, yeah. Oh, shit, today's Tuesday. I thought today was Monday. I was like, wait, tomorrow's yet? Yeah, wait, huh, what? Yeah, tomorrow's God, Wednesday. Damn, I thought today was Monday. Ah, oh, shit, I screwed up all that paperwork today. <laughs> you didn't. Uh, well, as long as I didn't actually have to write the day of the week down, I'm probably good. <laughs> oh. I did the same thing on Memorial Day. I got my boss all pissed off at me. We hit, um... He thought it was Wednesday, and everybody was saying, see you next week. He's like, whoa, wait, 
we've got work tomorrow. They're like, no, it's Thursday. We were off on Monday. Shut up. No, shit. Almost screwed that one up. <laughs> Crash! He yelled at me. <laughs> uh, you getting yelled at. That out. never happens. No, never. Hey, we should never. Never mind. <laughs> what the anyway, oh. okay. Hang so on, where do we leave on, off? Hang on. How can that thing go through? Hmm. Let me see if I can do this. Just hold on. You're discombobulated on non-show night. Now, I'm um, trying to get a hold of Todd. Yeah, i got to shut this down. But Russell? Yeah, Russell, I'm sorry. I got confused with somebody else. Hold on. It doesn't seem to be let me do it. All right, well, while you're working on that, I'm yeah. just going to go on another little bit of a tear. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Now, the funny thing is – actually, I don't even want to say funny. The sad thing is look what the media has been caught up in. I mean we've been caught up in all this stuff going on with the servers and the FBI case, which, yeah, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be caught up in it. We absolutely should be, and we should be absolutely infuriated with the announcements made today. But what about the rest of it? What about the investigation? I mean, the FBI, don't forget, the FBI has been investigating the Clinton Foundation, okay, this supposed organization run by the two of them that is, you know, to help and to aid and blah, 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 blah. How many charitable, quote unquote, charitable or nonprofit organizations have been taken down over the years due to misappropriation of funds? Okay, providing funds to questionable agencies or organizations overseas, receiving funds from questionable individuals or organizations overseas. Yet, again, as Ken the Conservative said, there is so much Teflon poured on these two people, nothing seems to stick. Yeah, it, it's, it, it just absolutely floors me. And if they're not – he said it best. They, he laid the case out. The case was laid out on national TV today. And the end result was All we right. Crash, hold up. recommend going out. Crash, hold up. We're going to try to get a hold of um, yep. um, Russell. Russell. So, yeah, let me – it put you on hold. Oh, shit. What do I do? What do I do? Go ahead. All right. Give me a second. Stop brushing me. You're worse than my wife. All right. Uh, Sorry, you little dick. Four. Hey. Are you there, Russell? Yeah. All right. Let's bring Crash into it. You there, Crash? No. Okay. Hey, Crash. <laughs> hey, how's it going, Russell? <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Uh, ah, glad to hear it. Haven't heard your voice uh, since gunboats were in fashion. Yeah, well, now it's time to... <laughs> Anyway, all right, what's going on, guys? Not much. Um, uh, hold on one second. All right. Well, as everybody knows, as we've been discussing all, the whole show, uh, it, it, it's just, it's, it is, um, it's disheartening what we are seeing um, and how things are going on within our government. It is saddening to, to see the state that this government's gone into. I just... Well, it's become apparent that the government's looking after select few, not the masses that elect them. Uh, essentially, we're nothing more than the indentured servants. We're the peasants. Well, I mean, this is something that's always been there. It's just being brought to light more and more nowadays with this situation in particular. Yeah. I mean, how can you really yeah. 
a two-term president. His wife is running for office. She is a past secretary of state. So this is a family that's been connected in high power politics. So, Arkansas, governor, one of 15 in the union. I mean, you know, I was listening to you earlier, and it was really a huge shock. I mean, you said it yourself. There's nothing that happened today that surprised you. You know, and you can get all upset about it. You can yell and scream and say everything you will, but there's one simple way of just don't vote her into office. No, I agree. I agree. But uh, some of these people, I mean, you almost have to hit them in the head with a sledgehammer for them to understand that. And it's taken something of this magnitude for them to finally comprehend that what we've been saying all along is actually true. And they're seeing it now for the first time. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. And nothing today, nothing that happened today has, has really shocked me. Yes, it does outrage me in a, in a certain level, but, I mean, did you really think they were going to come down and incite her and, and go to wherever she was and put her in handcuffs to bring her in for a booking? I mean, really. No, but I did think at least a grand jury might have been um... – because of the fact that, that some of the discord that's gone between uh, Clinton and the Obamas over the year, Obama's ego of his legacy, and he doesn't want to intertwine with Hillary's. I mean, the man doesn't get care about the Democrat Party. All he cares about is his legacy. So I maybe I was hopefully— yeah, but, a, but Jersey, on the flip side of that, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. All he does care about is his legacy. But if he worked out a deal to where his legacy can be carried out by backing her, I mean, look where he's at today. <laughs> I mean, he flew on the, he took her on Air Force One to go campaigning. Uh, oh, so, I know. I, it's, it's not I mean, that I didn't it could expect just be it, but nothing it, more than another just nod, nod, wink, wink. Here we go. It's another way for him to achieve his goal now. I mean, we all know that she had her own sets of goals, and I'm sure she still does. As did he. I mean, they were bit of rivals years ago. Oh yeah. It, now the point. I mean, at this point, you know, Obama is Teflon. I mean, really, <laughs> all he's trying to do is bring together enough money so he can get his presidential library in the end. The lame duck president. I mean, he's got to do a certain amount of what's expected of him by the Democratic Party. And yeah. you know, whether he likes her or not is irrelevant. Well, here's a question for both of you because um, you both are. Very intelligent when it comes to like the Constitution and all that. And it was a question my father put to me that he doesn't see any issue with it, and I can't find anything. Could Obama technically run for vice president now? No, because the vice president comes president if something should happen to her. Would be my guess without really looking. But up, there's been say- other presidents that have stepped up when the pre- vice president has stepped up to president, and that doesn't count as their term. Uh, but yes, it does. If it was over a certain period of time, it does count against the total term limit. Okay, in other words, I, 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 I'd have to actually look it up, just like Russell said. I'd have to look it up. But if it was, okay, in the case of a president is assassinated within the first year, VP stacks up, takes the rest of that term, then gets the second term, that's two terms. But if it was in, like, the remainder half he could theoretically still go two more terms. If yeah, I remember also, correctly, there is, is something hey, in there hey, about Crash. that. What's up? What'd you say, Russell? When is our references? I mean, Roosevelt and some of the term limits was set up relatively recently, and some of the sure. instances where someone like that could have been in a vice presidency might have been before term limits were put into effect. So that is also very true. Yeah, it, it's... I mean, it's a valid question. I don't know it's a black and white issue that whether he can or can't run because technically, yeah, he he would be stepping up to president, but um, he'd be technically I mean, vice I really don't think Obama wants any part of that. I mean, hate him. No, I, I, I couldn't see his ego. <laughs> the one thing I've learned. <laughs> anything else? One thing I've learned I, I is you don't do put though. anything past him at this point. Uh, I don't think he's going to play second fiddle to her. I, I, I no, agree, I, but my dad's been like four for four so far on this stuff, uh, so I'm kind of uh, hesitant to go against him. If he gives me the winning ball lottery numbers tonight, I'll go with him. 
But with everything that's happened, I'm really shocked that as of right today, we have not really seen a strong third party play into this with everything that has been going on between the two parties basically going radical right, radical left. We haven't seen a middle ground. It seems like in this presidential election, over other ones even, this is right for the picking for a third party to come in because a lot of people are looking for that. Well, the libertarians are trying, but uh, don't, they're not really pushing it like they should. Yeah, now, the thing is, though, I mean, at least from what I've seen is I think a lot of people look at Trump kind of as because he was the non-traditional Republican candidate, he kind of can embody a little bit of that third party. So where you would be looking for the third party to come in, I think a lot of people are kind of looking at him as already filling that slot. So why push for something else? I mean, a lot of the people that I've talked to up here, I mean, you know, there's the whole Never Trump movement, but I've seen a much bigger Never Clinton movement. I mean, they have no interest in that politic being anywhere near there. Well, I mean, to be quite honest with you, I mean, I wish I had another candidate in the Republican Party to put my vote behind. Um, I okay. would, I, and and it, it, I'm a strong Second Amendment. I'm a strong, you know, always have been a conservative mm-hmm. Republican, and I like what he says. But I mean, my dream was, you know, I'd really love to see someone like a Colin Powell or someone. But I don't think the Republican Party has something like that to put into them. It's kind of like they're dealing with what they got right now. Yeah, and I, I completely agree. I mean, a big part of the problem is, I mean. Essentially, they brought when, – when Trump went in, he signed that document saying that, okay, he won't run third party. Well, for somebody that is a strong Republican to now try to go in as a third party ticket, they would essentially be saying that we're going to hold one guy to the standard but not the rest of us. That would end up hurting them in the end, and I, I do agree with you. Uh, I, I mean do I think Trump's the perfect? Not really. But where I think he's the lesser of announced who his who is yes, I know. That's the key thing for me. I'd love you know, my, my vote could be wholeheartedly behind him with the right VP. Well he someone won't who's got he, some, someone who's got some world, world knowledge, world experience and not you know, a businessman. Right, and that's yeah, what he said. He said his vice things. president will be uh as someone that's more uh political, someone that's been in and, office that can help him along the way and now see that's the one thing that i think that trump does have going for him is he is a businessman i mean that's what he does he runs a business and whether people realize it or not the united states of america essentially is a corporation so having a businessman back back eight years ago yeah but romney didn't stand up and fight Romney quit fighting. No, but his draw yeah. was that he was a businessman, and we were in economic hardships right now, and a businessman might be the best one for the dollar. But does that say that that type of person is the best one for how we're going to deal with the rest of the world? And the VP No, but a combination – yes, the VP could be the deciding factor. A combination of a strong businessman with a strong political leader, putting those two together on the same ticket, that could be a winning combination. Yes. And it's all lot's going to depend on who Hillary pulls, too. Well, listen, guys, I hate to interrupt, but uh, that's going to be the end of the show. Uh, we're going to run out of time. Uh, Ken the Conservative is coming up next. And uh, I, I hate when other people run into my show, so I don't like to do it for the others. And I want to thank you, Russell, for coming on. It was greatly appreciated. I know it was last minute, and um, I'd love to have you on again. Uh, Not a problem. Have a good one, guys. Hey, call, See in, you. call in tomorrow. Talk to you later. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, to that, uh, we will, the Southside Much Show, will be back tomorrow night, 8 p.m., our normal time, right here on SHR Media. Till then, whoops, it would help if I had the exit music up. <laughs> you idiot. All right, have a good night. You've been listening to the Reaver of Common Sense with its host, Jersey Joe. You can tune in every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on hbpundit.com and shrmedia.com.